What's going on, guys? Meteorologist Jonathan Kegis with you. We are pinpointing the tropics on the Atlantic side. It is very quiet, thankfully. Where it is not, though, is the eastern Pacific side. And we actually just had a major hurricane make landfall a little while ago. We're going to break down Roslyn first for our friends in western Mexico. In this video, though, we're going to talk about three big things. Of course, first, major hurricane Roslyn just made landfall. And then in the Atlantic, really in the North Atlantic, we have Invest 94L. That is a very weak system that is likely going to meander in a very complex steering current, potentially impacting the Canadian Maritimes over the next week, give or take. And then we're going to break things down long range. Things are nice and quiet, all because of a widespread pattern that is going to keep things, again, relatively quiet. But that pattern is going to change as we work our way into November. So some things to really watch, especially in the Caribbean, and that does match up with climatology. We're going to break that down in a second. First, though, Category 3 Hurricane Roslyn officially coming ashore early Sunday morning in western Mexico to the north of Puerto Vallarta. Temperatures there are, again, are going to struggle, as, as you may imagine, with the extra clouds and the very strong winds. Again, Hurricane Hunter Recon was in there earlier this morning. They reported a lot of lightning and a lot of turbulence in their flight. Again, typically when you're talking about a major hurricane, it's actually a smooth ride for the hurricane hunters because there's not a lot of thunderstorm activity that is just coming up on them. So a very turbulent flight for our hurricane hunter friends. But again, critical information uh, being gathered, critical data from those brave men and women that fly into these storms. Again, coming ashore a little while ago, uh, in Western Mexico as a 120 mile per hour category three storm, uh, coming ashore again, rapidly weakening though, as it moves into the mountainous terrain of Mexico. And you see it there already by the early afternoon, a category one hurricane, still a formidable storm, but you see as we get into Monday morning, already a tropical depression. So as you look towards this track, if you're watching from Texas, you may be wondering, am I going to get moisture from this? And the answer to that is just a teeny tiny bit. Most of this is really going to be eaten alive by the mountainous terrain of Mexico. And there is a lot of land for this to go through. What your rain is going to come from is going to be a strong cold front that right now is bringing a big time blizzard into parts of Montana and Wyoming, or at least blizzard like conditions nearing that anyway. And you're going to have the opportunity for some severe weather in the plains, but some of that moisture will be injected into that system. It's just not going to have a huge impact on you. So you do not need to worry about a storm coming at you from the Pacific side per se. On to the Atlantic Ocean. There's not much going on, thankfully. This was to be expected post-Ian because of the Madden-Julian oscillation. You hear me talk about this quite a lot on Tropics Watch. And it's one of the large-scale features that you can forecast out several weeks. Again, it has a huge role in determining when activity increases and decreases really in all basins across the world but as we watch the atlantic right now we are in the nice quiet phase all of the activity is in the pacific it's in towards the indian ocean but we do have this little flare up of thunderstorms not really even thunderstorms it is very very weak there is a closed center there the hurricane center giving this entity just a 20 percent shot for development over the next few days i just want to show you a closer look here i mean this little guy is struggling mightily here you saw a little flare up of thunderstorms early on sunday morning and then really dissipating so while we did have a center at least yesterday it really can't maintain thunderstorms there is a very small chance that this thing takes on some subtropical characteristics meaning it gets some of its energy from fronts and some of its energy differences in temperature and then some of its energy from the warmer waters of the North Atlantic. This is not going to be a huge player at all, but you're likely going to see this thing just kind of meander, do some weird things in the North Atlantic over the next few days. In terms of where this is going again, Bermuda, we might see some inclement weather from this, but you see that little loop-to-loop -loop there after it impacts parts of the Canadian Maritimes. It is a really complex steering flow in the North Atlantic. So you may see this thing come back down towards the Azores and may see it just kind of do a few loop-de-loops in the North Atlantic, but this should not be a huge player at all. The Atlantic is really 
uh, unfavorable for development. A lot of wind shear out there. There's a lot of sinking air. And again, that is partially as a result to the Matt and Julian oscillation, thankfully not being what we call in phase and bringing those hostile conditions to the Atlantic Basin, whereas it's a little more conducive uh, in the Pacific. Now, going forward in time here, this is going to be super, super long range, really beyond 10 days, beyond Halloween. That Matt and Julian oscillation, again, it circles the globe. It's just a complex of thunderstorms, but it does help to enhance thunderstorm activity where it slides on through. And it will start to become in phase, as we call it, for the Caribbean as we get into the last few days of October and then really through that first week of November where I have that highlight there. There's a signal. Some of the long-range models are trying to signal at least a little bit of, uh, of development here in the Western Caribbean, and then where it goes from there is going to be super uncertain. I mean, we're talking beyond 10 days from now, but the fact that we're going to be dealing with this does line up with climatology for October and into early November. We've talked about this a lot, too, that the Cabo Verde season really shuts down once we get into... October. That's those storms that are roll off of Africa, those complex of thunderstorms that come out over the Cabo Verde archipelago and then make those that those long track storms that really kind of like Irma was back in 2017. That was a Cabo Verde storm and it just made that very long track trip. That part of the hurricane season shuts down really once we get into October. We do though look for these more homegrown storms closer to home in the Caribbean. And then as these cold fronts come through off of the U.S. mainland, they get out over the warmer water and they kind of stall out there. And oftentimes we do get tropical systems to develop at this stage of the game. Something that we're going to be watching for again as we work our way into uh, late October and then really through that first week of November. Again, there are some models hinting at we could have development and we're also seeing that line up with large-scale forcing and then we're also seeing that line up with climatology so when you see models start to do things like that you have to ask yourself a question why is it doing it don't just slap them on social media and be like okay we have this opportunity for a storm here you have to ask yourself why and dig a little deeper and that's what we're doing here on tropics watch and again the model suggestion, the model hinting at development lines up with a large scale pattern change that will be favorable. And it's also lining up with climatology. So we've got the trifecta there. So again, something that we're going to watch into the first week or so of November. It lines up. I mentioned about the climatology part. We are right there on that yellow line. Again, the peak of hurricane season climatologically, September 10th. We are way beyond that, of course. But you see that little nub in the graph, that little uptick. We are right about there where we typically would see the Caribbean part of the season take aim. Where, again, we see storms a lot in the Caribbean, even during the height of the season. But this is really the part where we really tend to focus on if there's going to be a late season push, it typically happens as we get into the latter stages of October and November. And then there is that abrupt shutoff of the hurricane season as we venture through the middle and latter stages of November. Certainly, can we get development in December? Oh, yeah, it's happened before. It's typically in weird areas and typically doesn't impact land at that point. But nonetheless, it happens. We're just focused on here uh, the last few days of October and then maybe the first week or two of November uh, for the potential for the Caribbean to kind of give one last unfortunate push here of this ugly hurricane season that, again, started off quiet, um, but it only takes one. In this case, it was two, Fiona and Ian. Alrighty, guys, we're thinking about our friends in Mexico. They're dealing with uh, major Hurricane Roslyn right now. They'll be dealing with that for the next 24 to 48 hours as it came ashore earlier this morning or officially made landfall. And again, going to watch Long Range in the Tropics. If you don't like this channel, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do. We would love to have you on this ride as we track the tropics. Thank you for tuning in. This has been another edition of Tropics Watch.